Profiles are some of my favorite stories to get to write. Um, for one thing, I love to get to know new people who are doing cool things. Um, and for another, they are just ripe with anecdotes and um, descriptive writing and opportunities to really show something that other people don't ordinarily get to see. So let's take a look at maybe how we can start to paint these kind of personality pieces with words. The best thing about profiles is everybody has a story to tell. Everyone has something interesting about them that's that they're, it's their own, and it makes them individual, and it makes them uh, unique in their own way. But some people are more newsworthy than others. They're more profile-worthy than others. And so what we have to look for is what makes people stand out in such a way that other people would want to read about them. Um, a lot of times it's a little person doing a big thing. Um, so you know, I had one story that was written in one of my classes about an Ohio State uh, graduate who likes to collect um, antiques and collectibles, not super, uh, you know, compelling at the moment. But then when the reader, when the writer pitched it, they said, "Oh!" And he also bought the Hollywood sign, the original Hollywood sign that was on the the hills in Hollywood Hills. That made him imminently more interesting. Um, so you know, we're always looking for something that's. It gives people such a, a an original perspective that um, readers would definitely want to read them. It's really written like a mini biography. We start with what makes this person compelling, um, but then we get into their story from the beginning of where their story begins all the way through to the present and kind of what we're looking at toward the future. So how do we decide if somebody is... Or, profile worthy or something is profile worthy because profiles can actually focus on any singular entity, be it a person, place, thing, an event. The key is, is there has to be something other people would want to read about it. And there also has to be something timely about it, some kind of hook that would tie it into uh, the point of publication. So if you want to profile the Columbus Arts Festival, that that might be great. It's say it's an anniversary of the Columbus Arts Festival or something new happened with it. Um, like I did a story after it had moved to a new location. Um, I couldn't run that story in April or in January. The Columbus Arts Festival was in June, so we wanted to run it closer to June or you know, certainly leading up to it and, and at a point when it would be useful to people. Um, the, the gentleman I have pictured here is Scott Gowdy. He's a world-renowned astrophysicist, also teaches at Ohio State. Seems like he'd be profile-worthy, but we still need that hook. What is it that makes him profile-worthy now? And at the point that I did profile him, he had received a, a $750,000 National Science Foundation grant, and as it was a career grant. And as part of that, he was going to work to um, expose uh, LGBTQ students uh, to science. So that's what made him profile worthy at that point. Good profiles are going to give you uh, access to people's feelings, their attitudes, their experiences, their mannerisms. Uh, I'm going to really get a good visual image of who they are, how they walk and talk, what they think, what they are feeling. All of these pieces will come together. Um, the picture I have here is... Uh, uh, her name is Kimberly Jacobs, and she's the police chief of uh, Columbus, Ohio. She was the first female police chief in the city's history, one of only a handful in um, America. But uh, more importantly, she's actually the first uh, lesbian police chief, and there was actually at the point of this story only two lesbian police chiefs. Um, so you know, I, I've given you this story, if you can take a look and read it, but um, the fact that she was a woman made her profile worthy at the point that I pitched the story, but when I found out that uh, she was a lesbian and that this was such a groundbreaking moment, um, that made her even more profile worthy. So it's important that you get to the real story and, and not just stop at what might appear to be a surface story. You're going to have to do a lot of research on somebody. The last thing that you want to do when you start to do a profile is to walk in and say, so tell me everything about yourself. Um, where are you from? When were you born? Um, you need to do all that stuff behind so that you come in with questions that actually mean something that you can, you know, if, if I know that, um, uh, you know, this is a, a band called the New Bomb Turks. If I know that this band got started at Ohio State, that uh, four, uh, sorry, three of these four people were students at Ohio State, I need to know that going in. That needs to be part of my research. And then I talk about about, well, you know, what did it mean to you to be at Ohio State? And, you know, how do you get started in being at a band or whatever questions I want to ask them? I shouldn't be asking them, how did you meet? Um, it's stuff, if it's out there, I should find it. Um, I'm also, I'm going to start talking to other people before I even talk to my interview subject. I want to find out, you know, some kind of little subtle nuances about them or things that maybe their friends or family know, but that it's not uh, been published before so that I can be out there in front of um, that aspect of the story. Because in the end, what it's really going on to is the interview 
And the interview with your subject is where you're going to get all your anecdotes, all of your examples, all the great quotes that you need, um, all of the color that's going to bring this story to life. And you got to remember, this person's virtually a stranger to you, or they, you know, they should for the most part, they should be um, based on the, the conflict of interest rules that a lot of us are following. Um, but I still need to coax them to say things that they wouldn't say to, you know, their friends, perhaps. Um, and that that goes into, you know, being professional, but yet being able to connect with people on a personal level and um, asking questions that are conversational. And we talk about that a lot in uh, the book, Always Get the Name of the Dog. And it's important that, that you really start to think about your interviews as conversations, especially as you get more into this kind of feature aspect of, of writing. So, you know, the first thing you want to do is get your subject support. Um, I, I mentioned before, I, I, I had a great uh, story that I wanted to do on someone, and uh, I pitched the story successfully to a magazine. The magazine was all excited. I went back to my subject, who was actually someone I'd known for years, and I said, oh, they agreed to write this story. And he's like, I don't want to do a story. You know, I don't I don't want any publicity about what I'm doing. So you have to make sure that, that they want to do it. Explain to them how you want to interview. Um, this uh, picture here is Jack Johnson, who plays for the Columbus Blue Jackets. When I profiled him, I, um, I told him I wanted to spend the day with him, basically. So I wanted to have some time to sit down and interview with him, but then I needed to see him in action. And um, the story, which I've given to you on iTunes U, I, uh, it relies very heavily on my ability to have seen him interact with fans and, you know, what his uh, mannerisms are like physically and, and as he was, you know, talking to fans of all different ages. Um, I, I'm going to need at least one intensive interview session, and I mean, you know, at least an hour somewhere private. Um, make sure that there's not a lot of distractions. Make sure that you're able to really, you know, get into that conversation aspect of things. You know, think about writing down uh, topics as opposed to, you know, questions that you might be rigidly stuck with. You're going to be gathering your quotes and your anecdotes and your detailed descriptions, your facts, um, and write down all everything you might need. So what does this person look like? What are they dressing as? What, you know, they wear glasses. If so, what do they look like? What does their hair look like? Um, you know, does someone have their fingernails painted? Uh, what kind of shoes are they wearing? What um, do they do with their hands? What are their mannerisms? You don't know if you're going to need it, but if you need it, you're really going to want to use it and you, you're desperately going to want to have it. And you won't have the option of getting it again if you don't get it during your interview. But you also have to very firmly come up with a focus for this story. What is it that you want the reader to know about this person? It can't just be that Jack Johnson plays for the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's not really interesting. So, you know, the angle of my story with Jack Johnson was that he came to the Columbus Blue Jackets, which was the, uh, they were the bottom dwelling team in the NHL. Um, and he came there from the Los Angeles Kings about three months before the Los Angeles Kings won the Stanley Cup. So he not only you know misses out on this chance to win the Stanley Cup, but he goes to this team that is in the basement. And you know what does he think about that? Is, is he resentful? And I didn't know what the answer would be until I met him. And you know I found out that he actually was very excited about it. And, and it, you know we went through a, a great conversation about what it meant to him. But that was the theme of the story. It, and I had to be very specific and very clear when I was interviewing him to get those answers. So to start to structure them, you've got to find your, your theme. What is it you want the reader to know? Um, I almost always organize these stories into an outline, as I've mentioned um, before about my quotes, about how I will structure my quotes into an outline under some type of categorical heading, and I put them in the order in which I think I'm going to want them in the story. So I'll put things under history or, you know, different facets of history to the present and going into the future. And then when I start to craft this story, um, I put my, the anecdote that I want that I've, I've come up with through my interviews, I always put that first, and whatever uh, conclusion, be it a quote or some other aspect of it that I have in my notes, I put that at the end. And then I fill in the middle. And the way that we structure these is, is the same way we structure so many of these stories, this anecdotal lead, a solid nut graph, and now we have a chronology. And that is crucial to the story. The chronology is going to take us from where the story begins through to where we are today and then where we're going in the future. So for the Jack Johnson story, for example, the story began when Jack Johnson began playing hockey. Uh, this the, the body in my story. For the Kimberly Jacobs story, the body begins when Kimberly Jacobs first began thinking about a career in police work. And then I go through all her career until we get to her being named chief, where she is today, and where she thinks she's going in the future. 
So this is kind of a sample structure for you, this anecdotal lead, the nut graph. Then I, I go back to where we are today. So, um, you know, as you, you may see in that Kim Jacobs story of, of how I start the story, and then uh, I get the nut, and then I, I have her in her office, and I show some things in her office before we get into the chronology. And then you can see we've outlined it, much like I've said to you before, where are we now, what lies ahead, and then a good closing quote or anecdote. Now, I talk to as many people as I need to in order to get the information I need. For Scott Gowdy's story, he told me that he got um, interested in astronomy for, by his second grade teacher showing him a book. Um, and, you know, I, as much as it was going to be a hassle to find her because uh, he didn't know where she was anymore, I, I had to find her. I had to get an anecdote from her to what her experience was. What did she remember about this? So, um, you know, you'll see in that story, I really did track down his second grade teacher who had long retired um, in order to fill out that story. So the less sources you use, the, the, the more willing you are to compromise on getting your information, the weaker your profile is going to be. Think like the reader. What is it people want to know? Who can provide this information, this insight into this person? And, and th that's how you're going to decide um, what sources you interview and um, how many of them you need.